Have you ever wanted to play in the United States on Football Manager, but you didn't? because the MLS and all of its rules suck. Well, do I have the solution for you? Something better, something revolutionary. The Star Spangled Awesome Firework Bacon Zealand American Database. 42 ounces of pure American USDA approved beef slapped onto the table just like that. And you can devour it with all the child-sized sodas that your heart desires. And then finish it off with a pound of ice cream because this is America, but with Pro-Rel. <sighs> Let's get weird. So for about four or five, six months, I honestly don't even know how long it's been. We have been working on a project. We have a database guy. His name is Reed. We'll say hi to the man. Reed's family is adorable, but that's not why Reed is here right now. Reed is here because Reed is my database guy. Whenever you see some database pop up for a test I've done, Reed is the guy that's made it. And Reed's been working on a very special project for a long time now that, well, I mean, you've already heard the title of the project. It, it doesn't exactly fit on a t-shirt, but it is effective. This is the best American database you've ever seen for Football Manager. It is a seven tier, broken into regional, dynamic ProRel database that includes college teams, various academy teams, it includes Native American teams, and it includes all former and current clubs that have ever existed in the United States organized into appropriate divisions with new and existing cup competitions to keep life as spicy as humanly possible. It's been play tested for months. It works and it's a rip-roaring good time. I know this because Reed has been playing a save on it for months. So this is no longer something Reed just gets to mess around with this in his spare time, right? So how does this work? Okay, when you are going to be watching this video, it will be up on FM Base. The link will be down in the description and you can download the zip file. If you already know how to install a database, you can skip this section. I will very briefly describe to you what to do with that zip file. You're going to want to download it to your documents, Sports Interactive, Football Manager 2021, uh, and then you're going to want to extract that file. When you open it, you will see an XML document, which is a bunch of words on a page, and you'll see a folder, right? And why open it, I mean, you right click on something that's zipped like this folder here, use a program called 7-Zip to unzip it. Once you have 7-Zip on your computer, it's here when you right click it. Just say extract here, and it will literally come up with a loading screen. You feel like a computer hacker and the folder's there for you. You take the graphics, which is the vanilla folder that you see once you've extracted it, and you put that in the graphics folder. You then take the XML file and you put it in editor data, which should already be there. Your graphics folder might not be there. If it's not, just create it. The game will recognize it right in here. Just a little right click like you're making any folder. Once you've done that, it will appear in the game. You click start new game and you go to career. You go to the top right and you will just select American tiers right here. And if you have anything else, obviously you want to deselect it. Click confirm and then go to advanced setup. That's the end of the tutorial. We're ready to go. And then you just set it up like any other game. One thing that you need to be sure that you include add players to playable teams, you need to click that. There are thousands of teams in this American database. You are going to want to make sure they're populated. For our purposes, we'll just have the United States and we'll get it all the way down to the USASA lower leagues, uh, which are actually not playable, but they're there. Every other league that you just saw is actually playable. We've even, we came up with names. <laughs> we have the Tesla Major League Premiership, uh, the Chase North American Championship, the Xbox United League, the Amazon Prime Division, then the Netflix Championship, League One and League Two all the way down. It is a three national league and then regional league system with dynamic relegation. I'll explain how that works in a second, but first we have to edit this database to make sure that the entire continent of North America is in the game. You're gonna wanna do that because there's some created players that you're probably gonna wanna involve. So it's giant, you wanna add a bunch of other countries, be my guess, but let's get ready to uh, rock and roll. Oh yeah, the database is set to a winter schedule just so it lines up with the rest of the world. Hope that's okay. Hope you weren't emotionally attached to the summer schedule. It just makes more sense this way, really. But here's the backstory of American Tears. After decades of broken promises and false starts, US soccer has finally decided to listen to growing calls for a more European style league from top to bottom. With financial backing from some of America's wealthiest people and companies, as well as the inclusion of affiliate clubs from all of the other major American sports leagues, the entire pyramid has been rebuilt. Fresh pathways for American talent to flourish. Can you lift your club and the US to new heights? The database replaces the MLS with a seven level promotion and relegation pyramid with over a thousand clubs, 90% of which are real or historic 
with a priority on accuracy. The top three divisions pay homage to the MLS, NASL, and USL, with the most reputable clubs in the US battling to earn spots in playoffs to determine promotion and championships. Okay, we have our coach ready to go, and I feel like we should just be managing in, what do you say, Big Sky League One? And let's take over the uh, the Kickapoo Tribe. How's that sound? The Kickapoo Tribe out in the Big Sky. It is an amateur club based off of one of 29 uh, different tribes that have been included in the game with athletic clubs that are able to participate. Golden Eagle Field is the name of the spot, and obviously the exact geographic location of where they actually are in in Kansas has been preserved. You can take any number of tribes and try and lead that tribal team to glory in the honor of that particular tribe. It's a very interesting side of the game, but it's just a small part. Let's break down the entire pyramid before we get into the different stories that you can involve yourselves in in this American Tears. At the top of the American Tears system, you have the Tesla Major League Premiership. This is a 24 team league at the top of the barrel. You play every other team once and then it breaks in half. This means you have a top 12 and a bottom 12. What you're competing for in the top 12 is to get into the playoffs. You have to preserve some of the American spirit in this. And so if you finish in the top eight, you go into the playoffs seated. And out of those eight teams, if you win your first round game, you get to the semifinals, which qualifies you for the Champions League in CONCACAF. Obviously, if you win the whole thing, congratulations, you've won the Tesla Major League Premiership. If you end up in the bottom four from the relegation group, unfortunately for you, you're going down. Fortunately for you, the second division is also national. This is the Chase North American Championship. There are 30 teams participating in a similar format. You play everybody once in and then the leagues break and you play everybody one more time. The promotion playoff takes place from the top eight. If you win your first round playoff game, then congratulations, you've qualified for promotion. Obviously, you keep playing the playoffs at that point to settle who actually gets the trophy for winning the league, but you're going up. And then the bottom four go down to the third National League, which is the Xbox League. And it works the exact same way. 30 teams, promotion playoff to get the four spots, and bottom four teams get relegated. But here is where things get incredibly spicy and where this database goes from, wow, really cool, to this is one of the hopefully coolest things I've ever seen, because that's what we were going for. The fourth division breaks regional. It breaks into four regions. It's the Amazon Prime division, where you have a Northeast, Northwest, Southwest, and Southeast section. Now you might be wondering how this works, and I'm gonna explain that to you, because you're relegating into this with teams that can be from anywhere in the country. And this is where you're introduced to what could be your blessing and what could be your nightmare. And that's the idea of dynamic relegation. Let's say, four teams relegated from the Xbox League are all in the Northeast, or at least what is denoted as the Northeast for the purposes of this game. That means the Northeast has to relegate a few more teams in order to keep the leagues balanced. Now, if you finish in the bottom of one of the four divisions in the prime division, you're gone. If you finish last, you are relegated. It doesn't matter what part of the country you're in. But if you finish 11th to 8th, you are relegation threatened. Because if every single one of those teams relegated from the third national division to the regional division, if they're all in the northeast, everybody up to 8th is getting relegated to make space. If they're all in the northwest, everybody up to them is getting relegated to make space. Say there's two in the northwest and two in the northeast, well then three teams from the prime division northeast and three teams from the prime division northwest up to including Philadelphia City. They're going down. Oh wait, up to Pittsburgh. I literally can't count. Oh look, the Boston Red Sox club team is in this division. Oh, did we mention that? I don't think we've mentioned that. Every major sports team in the four major leagues in the United States, which is NHL, ice hockey, MLB, baseball, NFL for football, and NBA for basketball. Each one of those is treated as a sporting club as part of the U.S.'s directive in this universe to get the entire nation involved in the ladder of the sport, which means each one of those major sports teams has a club in this database. They won't be starting super high, but they will have some pretty darn good facilities and financial resources, if that's your thing. So this is the Boston Red Sox team. Fenway Kenmore Red Sox. Secure finances and a pretty darn good reputation. I think they're gonna do well for themselves. Let's say you're a giant Patriots fan, a Steelers fan in the NFL. Maybe you have a soft spot for hockey. You're a big Rangers fan. <laughs> Dr. Benji. Then, you can hop in and take care of it. Maybe you're a big Tampa Bay Lightning fan, as you should be. You get Tampa Bay United Lightning FC. Boom. The kit's honestly sick. Love the red stripe, but with blue. Looks like Finland. Oh, the Lightning. 
anywhere your heart desires. So that's the idea of dynamic relegation. And that starts in the Amazon Prime divisions at the fourth level. Things also get different competitively at this level. And I'm telling you this now just so you understand what you're getting involved in or what you'll be watching. It's fun to simulate and look at. You play every team twice, which means you play a 22 game season. That's too short. It finishes in February. And so the idea that we came up with is that there's actually a competitive cup for the teams that finish in the top half of the league and the bottom half of the league. If you finish top of the league, congratulations, you've been promoted from your region. But then you enter into the Twitch Challenge Cup, which is for the teams that finish in the top six. This is a highly televised event that shows off the lower league side of the game to the US population. It's the fourth division Champions League, essentially, where you get the top six teams from each region and go into a group stage cup format, the winner of which gets a sizable financial contribution, which means if you finish sixth in the league, but happen to win the Twitch Cup, you're in a very good position to compete for promotion next year. There's also a Whole Foods Cup for teams in the bottom six. Uh, it doesn't have as much money involved, but it is something to do after February. Let's say you really want to do a deep dive, though. You go down to the Netflix Championship. The Netflix Championship is broken even further into regions because at this level, teams can't finance the type of travel you'd need to do to cover even a quarter of the United States. So to keep it financially balanced, we have the Atlantic, Big Sky, Cascadia, Frontier, Pacific, New England, Great Lakes, and Piedmont conferences. Let's take a look at the Big Sky Conference. You've got 28 teams in each of those conferences. It is incredibly difficult to get out of the Netflix championship and get yourself into the Amazon Prime divisions. You have to win. You have to win your region. Out of 28 teams, you have to win. But you really want to avoid the bottom part of the league because as you might have figured out by now, that dynamic relegation, well, that's going to be sending teams down that are skewed towards one part of the country. So in order to keep all of the leagues balanced and prevent Hawaii from eventually ending up in some Northeast division, dynamic relegation is a trickle down event that trickles down to the fifth flight. If all Northeastern teams get relegated from the third division, in the fifth division, the Big Sky is only going to be relegating three teams. If a bunch of teams from the center and northwest part of the country get relegated from the third division, then all the way up to potentially 21st in the Big Sky Championship could be sent down to Big Sky League. Sorry, the Netflix. Big Sky League One. My bad. Gotta get the sponsors in there. And you see at this level, we start to have the academies. The academies can't rise past the Netflix championship. Important thing to know. Those are, however, only the academies that are attached to teams. There are academies around the US that are also U23 that are not attached to teams. They can rise as high as you possibly want to take them. It'd be a very interesting challenge. IMG is an incredibly notable one in Bradenton, Florida, that does a very good job developing young players for college soccer around the country. And they're in the game. You can take them over and raise them up as far as you want to go. And every one of these teams is real or a derivative of one of the big four sports or a tribe. These leagues also operate with a split. So you play everybody once, then split and play everybody again on your side of the split. That's just the most effective uh, way to do this without having to play everybody twice, in which case you'd be playing 54 games. If you go to the Netflix League One, you see that the promotion is a little more lenient. We're not at the bottleneck anymore. Netflix League One and League Two top four get promoted out of each of the conferences. The bottom is still on ripple relegation, just so you know, is that's the way that this all stays balanced regionally is ripple relegation. A couple of Northeast teams, like all four teams relegated from the Xbox League in the third division are all Northeast. It will be felt in the seventh division something you got to pay attention to. That will determine whether Sporting Tampa Bay still exists or whether they get relegated down to Netflix League 2. You're rooting for your region at all times if you're trying to climb up, but based off of all of the times that we sat down to figure out how to do this, this was the best way to link regional leagues with the top leagues. And thus we have created a completely realistic, interesting, and hopefully engaging for you experience where none of this breaks the immersion for me. This is the way that if I was God of the universe, I would design the US league system to look like this. Exactly. Providing an opportunity for over a thousand clubs to end up at the top of the US pyramid. Before we get into specific challenges you can tackle, just so you know the cups, there's the US Open Cup, which is still open to everybody. That is real. The Thomas K. Hill Memorial Trophy is not real. It is open to the top three leagues, to the national leagues. It is the League Cup, essentially. Now, when we get down to the Netflix divisions to offer another opportunity for those teams, you have the Phil Woosnam Trophy. Uh, and then if you are down in Netflix League Two, you have the Gat Miller Trophy. That's like 
than aggressively amateur trophy. The U23s, you get the Sports Interactive Cup, that's just for the youth teams and the academies, of course, and the Zealand Cup for the U18s, because Reed thought it would be funny. I'm pretty sure it's gonna get me arrested. And a note before I forget, when you look at your squad, when you start with one of these clubs, you might not feel like you have a full team. Just go to your U23s and your U18s. There will be players down there as well for you to fill out your team. A lot of these amateur teams do not have a lot of players. That's the way it was set up. You're not supposed to have a ton of players. You can't afford them. It is a very long pyramid to get up in the U.S. There are a lot of small clubs in the U.S. But specific challenges, and namely one in particular, I think would be incredibly interesting. You can take over universities and colleges. There's a couple of rules. One, they are enforced amateur. This is realistic. It's the way it works in the United States. They are in their own league system playing each other right now, but in this reimagined world, they're participating in the actual league system. They also have a U23 cap. So it's U23 and they're enforced amateur, but there's no promotion cap. They can win the top division if you're good enough. And there's a whole host of universities. You've got the UCLA Bruins. You've got Virginia. If you're thinking of a university, you're probably going to be able to find it. We already talked about the native teams in terms of how to find them and take control of them. New England and New York, uh, any section around there is going to have a few, but mostly you'll find them in big sky country. That's where the native teams are going to be playing out of. Personally, I feel like the Tinseltown Lakers Sporting Club, the Lakers local club that they've adopted because we've gone from a franchise model to a sporting club model. Maybe you want to take them to the heights. That's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. You get a nice boost to facilities. We actually figured out a way to provide the finances. 1% of the annual budget of the actual team and the sport that they play has been provided as the financing for their brand new soccer football club thing that they've got going on. And so a lot of these clubs are very rich compared to the teams that are around them. And so you don't have to create your own golden parachute scenario. It's built into the game with these teams that are starting up clubs. But perhaps that's not your style. Well, that's okay. We also have very old clubs that won the U.S. Open Cup. Like how about a club that hasn't existed for almost a hundred years? Morgan Strasser. They won the U.S. Open Cup in 1920. Well, they've been revived. You even had the Chrysler Workers Union in Detroit had a club that was founded in 1912. Guess what? They're here. And you can guide that former Workers Union club all the way to the top and preserve your love of history because the United States was pretty freaking good back then. Finished third in the World Cup in 1934. And clubs like Detroit Chrysler SC were providing those players. <laughs> the world is your oyster. You can imagine how many freaking teams are here, uh, but I can tell you there's only one person you're going to want to manage them. Me. I'm in the game as a coach. Sign me, please. I have Tuvalis second nationality. Oh, Tuvalu. Well, I actually really like the primary kit for Detroit Chrysler. I think that's that's actually a pretty sick kit. Oh, they're in Great Lakes League too. Don't get relegated. The game ends, but hey, long road to glory. Look. This is a passion project. We designed a database. Reed put the boots on the ground for months to get this database made to, to realize a vision of what the U.S. pyramid could and maybe even should be with every possible collection of clubs that are revived from history that were forced to be included by the other big four sports in the United States and that were provided for all of the different native nations in the United States. I mean, it's any, any anything you want to do. And college soccer was included in it too because I think college soccer being off on its own is weird weird to begin with. And so this is it. This is the American Tears database. I read the mead that we helped with. <laughs> Enjoy it. Let me know how your saves go. Check the link out down in the description. It's available for download now on FM Base. I'll see you soon. I really hope I'm having fun in Alaska. Is there an Alaskan team? I'm sure there is. Oh yeah, the Alaska Timbers. They're in Cascadia League One. Check them out. <laughs>